Hello, 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 and welcome to the Jolly Heretic. Now, I want to let you into it. Well, it's not a secret if you watch the channel a lot, but it may be a secret if you're new. Uh, I have very serious problems with balance and with fine motor skills and with physical coordination. And a number of you have asked me to do a video on the issue of dyspraxia, um, which I'm going to do today, and I've, I've never been diagnosed with dyspraxia, but I suspect I probably do have it. I was on a little holiday with a friend in the, the English countryside recently, and this involved doing things like climbing over stiles and climbing over fences. And, and I just physically can't. And if it wasn't for him, then I would have just fallen off. There was, there was no way I could, without help, um, get over these fences. My physical coordination, my balance either, is just not good enough. Uh, and similarly, when I was a child, for reasons I will look at later, it took me until I was about eight or nine years old to be able to walk up the stairs or walk down the stairs. Uh, I, uh, I would crawl up the stairs and I would uh, sit on the step and push myself down in order to go down the stairs. And that went on until I was something like eight years old and I had physiotherapy and whatever, um, and, and gradually it got better. Now, these are the markers of dyspraxia, which some of you have asked me to talk about today. Dyspraxia is a developmental disorder. It begins in early childhood and it is marked by problems with both f f gross and fine motor skills. Uh, those that suffer from it are gonna have tremendous problems with balance, problems with physical coordination. They're going to have difficulty with all of those kinds of milestones, with learning to ride a bike, with learning to write, uh, with, with learning to do up buttons, with learning to do up their tie, with learning to do up their shoelaces, um, with, with, with being able to climb up climbing frames. I could not do that when I was at infant school, no way. And I'd watch all, all the other kids did so gracefully, swan-like. And of course, I couldn't, I just couldn't. Um, and, and all of this sort of thing. This is this is dyspraxia. It's this uh, the two problems learning to drive. Um, it's serious problems with uh, physical coordination and with balance. As a child, I would fall over all the time and I had patches on my trousers uh, to prove it. I mean, all the time. Um, this is dyspraxia. So dyspraxia is the inability to do what would be uh, or to do completely what would be normal physical tasks that someone of your age as a child should be capable of doing. You will have a delay in being able to do these kinds of physical tasks. You will be uncoordinated, you will fall over, uh, you, uh, you know, you will, you will, um, you have all of these physical problems, particular problems with balance, particular problems with coordination. So you're going to be absolutely rubbish at things like tennis or whatever, sport or whatever. And that is dyspraxia. Now, apraxia is even more severe. This is that you just can't do it at all. I, you can understand the command and you want to be able to do it. But you simply can't, you can't even begin to do it. You're just, you're just frozen. You can't do it. Uh, whereas dyspraxia, you understand the command, you want to do it, and you can sort of partially do it. But, but apraxia, you simply can't do it at all. Now, what predicts this, uh, this dyspraxia? By the way, it's something I first came across when I was at university. And there was this girl there uh, who informed me that she was dyspraxic. Uh, and she was very, very poorly coordinated. She was always fall worse than me, really. Um, she was always falling over. Um, she passed her driving test on her sixth attempt or, or something like this. Um, it was embarrassing watching her try to, you know, catch a ball or catch a pen or whatever. I mean, she really was worse than even than I was. Um, and that's how I first came across the term dyspraxia. But that's that's the essence of dyspraxia. Now, what causes it? Um, well, it affects males more than females, and that's probably because of the, the, the male variability hypothesis. There is more genetic variability in males because males uh, play a high-risk, high-stakes game in prehistory, whereby it is only the male that is um, that is that manages to stand out over the other males that will get uh, the, the majority of the will get any females at all, and so therefore you you end up taking risks genetically in order to get any females, and so you get more. Uh, with, with the possible with the possibility that any uh, 
uh, mutation may be positive, and so you end up with more variability among males. So, so um, it, it's higher among males, and it's particularly high among people who were born prematurely. Now, I was, as I've looked at in my book, um, sent before their time, genius, charisma, and being born prematurely, um, in which I statistically demonstrated that people that are born severely prematurely are overrepresented among geniuses and among charismatic figures, religious leaders, people like that. Moses was supposedly born three months early, for example. Buddha was supposedly born three months early. Um, um, uh, the, uh, there, there is uh, premature people, because of the way in which the brain is damaged and fixes itself, can end up being very unusual, and they can end up having um, sort of very, very skewed intelligence, um, a very, very narrow intelligence, reflecting the fact that a lot of the brain is destroyed because of starvation of oxygen when they're born too early with their lungs not being developed enough. And in its most extreme case, you get someone like Derek Paravicini, who is um, mentally retarded and who is blind, but he is a genius in the sense that he has perfect pitch. Uh, and, and he could, uh, uh, amazing, as well, a very narrow element of intelligence. He is an absolute genius. But anyway, being born prematurely, uh, particularly before the 37th week, is associated with dyspraxia. And presumably the reason for that is that if you are born that early, then your lungs are too small, insufficient oxygen is taken into the brain, uh, your brain is damaged, uh, and the brain, of course, and coordination and all these kinds of things are extremely sensitive to, to, to brain development. The brain is damaged, it doesn't develop properly, so you end up with dyspraxia uh, and you can't control your movements properly. Um, similarly, if you are born that prematurely, then you basically develop a form of cerebral palsy. Um, and uh, the, the more the earlier you are born uh, or the more unlucky you are then the more severe that cerebral palsy will be and it could be argued that there is some sort of crossover between cerebral palsy and dyspraxia people that have cerebral palsy have these problems with movements and and and, and whatever problems with, with with coordination that is that is cerebral palsy the second predictor is just low birth weight well this is basically the same really as being born prematurely if you are born of low birth weight you are small for gestational age, then again, you shouldn't be out of the womb yet. So you're, you're not being able to take in enough oxygen, you're not, your brain is damaged, and so you are likely to develop problems of various kinds, and these can include uh, dyspraxia. And the third thing is that there seems, as with, with many of these kinds of traits, they're often about 0.5 heritable. So the third thing appears to be just any kind of family history of dyspraxia. So there can be a genetic component. I mean, what we've presented so far is really an environmental explanation, premature birth, low birth weight. Um, but, but also uh, that there is a, a, any kind of family um, relationship uh, with, with someone that's dyspraxic means that you're more likely to have it. Currently, about 6% of school pupils in England are diagnosed with dyspraxia, which is consistent, roughly, actually, with the percentage of kids, I think it's about 10% uh, these days, that are born prematurely and survive. So this is, again, showing you that the likely causal explanation is being born prematurely. And as I say, the key markers, are if you have a young child, they will have tremendous difficulty going up and down stairs. They will have tremendous difficulty with balance. They will have terrible difficulty with sport. And they will often be sort of physically restless, sort of moving their limbs about and whatever. Like they have problems controlling their, uh, their, their, their limbs. And the key reason is brain damage. And um, consistent with this, there are a number of interesting correlates of dyspraxia that are purely psychological in nature. One is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. About 50% of people that are diagnosed with dyspraxia are diagnosed with this. And this is itself associated with being born prematurely because the brain hasn't developed properly it's developed suboptimally and so therefore you end up with problems problems paying attention and problems staying still and, and and all this sort of thing interestingly there is some evidence that adhd is associated with having problems concentrating but also with periods of very profound concentration where you're utterly absorbed in what you're doing and there is some evidence that um, that genius or at least being a very creative scientist when cu um, coupled with extremely high intelligence um, uh, is predicted by having ADHD because of the way in which ADHD allows you for periods of time to utterly be absorbed in something that interests you, although often, of course, it means that you have problems with things that don't amazingly interest you. Um, the second relationship is anxiety and depression. Well, I think this is just the same. Um, the key underlying factor is prematurity. If you're born prematurely, then there's not enough myelin on your brain 
And so this causes you to have anxiety and depression, uh, but, but also it will cause you to have dyspraxia. It's the same underlying cause, which is the suboptimal, the, the severe environmental insult of being born prematurely. The third um, is just, pro it's just, um, it's problem is autism. Now autism, again, um, is strongly associated with being born prematurely. Again, because the brain hasn't developed properly, the brain is severely damaged, and so you you end up with this um, this this the, the, the brain develops in this predictably peculiar way due to the damage, um, and that is that uh, you are autistic, you are low in empathy, you take in far too much information, you become easily overstimulated, you are obsessed with systematizing, uh, or whatever. You just have this 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 peculiar brain, um, and this again, autism, as I look at it in the book, is very strongly associated when when couple when it goes together with high intelligence or narrow skewed intelligence. Uh, it goes together with geniuses. And there is quite a lot of evidence that uh, a lot of the geniuses we've had in human history were basically, particularly the ones I note in the book, like Isaac Newton and Kepler and whatever, were born prematurely. They were highly intelligent. Their intelligence was very narrow. So there were certain things which which normal person would be fine at, but they were rubbish at. Um, and they had these autistic and indeed sort of psychopathic traits, low empathy and that kind of thing, but very, very high systematizing. Um, and uh, the other is they will have problem with gra problems with, graph with graphic, problems with writing, because writing involves fine motor skills and so on. And so they're going to have a tremendous difficulty with being able to write properly. So writing will be very untidy and perhaps they will have problems uh, taking their ideas and putting them into words in a written form. Um, but no, I just I was I didn't know. I must say I didn't know any of this. So I would like to thank the person that suggested I look into dyspraxia. Uh, I didn't I didn't really know about any of the causes of it. And uh, other than this friend of mine at university who was mad as a box of frogs uh, who had it. Uh, and so I was quite interested to, to research this. So thank you that I discovered that I that I probably have it myself. So as I say, if you'd like to read more about prematurity and all of its various associations, um, I'm not sure I mentioned dyspraxia. I think I mentioned lack of physical coordination. So by I essentially mentioned dyspraxia. Um, then you can see them in my book uh, sent before their time. And if you have any other interesting ideas, then do send them in. And I will see you all soon. And um, goodbye. Hello, hello, hello. The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House and I will see you all soon and goodbye!